All right, so let's start out with Friday night's heavyweight fight. Tony Yoka knocks out Johan Duopa in the first round. Now, this was an eyebrow razor. I did not expect this result. First of all, I'm a bit puzzled as to why BoxRec haven't got this fight on Tony Yoka's BoxRec page or on Johan Duopa's BoxRec page. Because normally, BoxRec will update their records very soon after a fight. Whereas here we are two days after, or a day and a bit, and they still haven't updated either Duopa or Yoka's records. I'm not sure if there's a sanctioning issue there or something like that, or maybe it's just, you know, BoxRec and oversight on their behalf, whatever the case may be. Anyway, the fight itself, as I say, an eyebrow razor, because Johan Duopa, although he's been stopped in the past, those have been in tough fights against Deontay Wilder, where he was stopped in, was it the 10th or the 11th? It was indeed the, where are we at? 11th round, he was stopped against Wilder. And he never hit the canvas in that fight. And he gave Wilder some real, real tough work. He swole Wilder's eye up. He was landing good jabs. And he took all Wilder's best punches. I mean, he ended up with pretty bad facial damage himself, Johan Duopa, in that fight. But he took all Wilder's best shots, stayed on his feet, and was stopped in the 11th when the referee waved it off, but never hit the canvas, as I say. He was also stopped against Povetkin in six rounds back in 2016, but he took that fight on extremely short notice. In fact, he was in Russia as a spectator because he had been invited over there or he turned up to watch Povetkin fight Berman Stavern, but that fight didn't happen because of failed PED tests and what have you. So they asked Duopa, who was there as a fan, do you want to step in and fight Povetkin? I mean, Duopa didn't even have his boxing boots. He fought that fight with his trainers on or sneakers, as you call them in the United States, just to show you how ill-prepared he was. Even the shorts he was wearing or boxing trunks didn't look like proper trunks. Okay, so he had literally been plucked out of the crowd, had no training camp at all, wasn't even thinking about fighting. <laughs> okay, so wasn't match fit, wasn't psychologically prepared, hadn't trained for anybody, much less somebody the standard of Povetkin, who back in 2016, he was even more formidable than he is now. Let's just put it that way. So you can't really read too much into Duopa getting stopped in six. And that was a clean KO in six rounds by Povetkin. Now, Yo uh, to excuse me, Tony Yoka, a young guy, big guy, Olympic gold medalist, but he's never been renowned as a serious puncher. So, that's part of the reason why this result was surprising, him stopping Duopa in the first. Also, the shots which he hit Duopa with didn't look particularly devastating. I mean, I've seen Duopa get hit with much more devastating looking punches than that and just eat them up. I mean, remember when, again, he fought Deontay Wilder, took all his best shots for 11 rounds, and even when he fought Robert Hellenius, that was the fight before the Povetkin fight. When he fought Robert Hellenius, he took some real good shots off Hellenius. And Hellenius, as we know, can punch. If nothing else, he's a good puncher. So absorbed his shots, no issue at all. But against Yoka, you know, he got hit with a shot that seemed to land on the ear. And that caused the first knockdown. He managed to get to his feet, but it wasn't too long before Yoka landed an uppercut and a few other shots Johan Duopa went down again and the referee waved it off. I was looking at Duopa's body language. I was looking at his eyes and he didn't look like a man who was seriously hurt in there. He didn't. He seemed to have all his faculties about him. Now, when he got up from the first knockdown, yeah, he stumbled slightly as he got up. But, you know, again, I don't think he looked that badly hurt to me. So it was an eyebrow razor to see the fight go that way. Now, obviously, it's common in boxing that if you've had a lot of tough fights and if you're an older guy like Duopa, 39 years of age, your punch resistance eventually is going to start to decline. And maybe that's what we saw here. There have been fighters over the years who have been renowned for their toughness, but when they come to the end of their careers, they start getting dropped. I mean, a good example would be Ray Mercer. He always had a tremendous chin, but towards the end of his career, he was getting dropped by Shannon Briggs, you know, managed to stop 
Ray Mercer, uh, Klitschko, obviously, even David Tua. He was another guy renowned for having a great chin. And towards the end of his career, he was getting dropped by people like Monty Barrett. And understand that Tua had been in there with much bigger punches than Barrett. Same way, well, Shannon Briggs was a very good puncher and obviously Klitschko was too. But Ray Mercer had been in with other big punches before. Whereas when he got hit with one real solid shot from Shannon Briggs, in fact, was it even such a solid shot? I can't remember now. But with Ray Mercer, the Lennox Lewis fight took a lot out a lot out of him, excuse me, by way of punch resistance, because he actually ended up getting a damaged nerve in his neck during that Lennox Lewis fight, which would later require surgery. And after that surgery, his punch resistance was just never the same. So I'm assuming Duopa hasn't had any type of procedure done like that. But either way, maybe it's just a case of his punch resistance starting to decline now in a major way because of his age and because of the miles on the clock. Because he has been in, in some tough fights. He has taken a lot of punishment over the years. Maybe Yoka's shots were really accurate and he's been working on his power. And, you know, Duopa wasn't able to maybe roll with the shots the way he normally would or get his chin down far enough. I don't know. But it was a surprising result. On a lighter note, though, it was good to see there was a crowd in attendance. There was seemingly very few restrictions. Everybody was able to breathe freely. Definitely a plus for French boxing right now and for the people that turned up to enjoy the show. And Tony Yoka moves on. If any of you know why this fight hasn't appeared on Tony Yoka's box rec, if you know of any controversy or anything like that, please leave links in the comment section below because I would obviously be very interested to find out about that. But again, it could just be Box Rec and their staff are very busy at the moment. It's just an oversight on their behalf. Perhaps when I refresh the page after uh, finishing this, it'll be there. Who knows? But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Tony Yoka stopping Johan Duopa in the first round. Is this what you expected? Did you think like me, the fight would go several rounds, possibly even the distance, or maybe you're someone who's been following Tony Yoka's career very, very closely, and you had a feeling that he might put this type of performance in and really send a message out to the rest of the heavyweight division. So, I mean, nobody has stopped Johan Duopa this quickly. Povetkin stopped him in six, Wilder stopped him in, what was it, 10 or 11? No one's, you know, managed to stop him in one. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about this fight. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.